I wanted to do another video on how to, <clears throat> excuse me, how to do a station stationing on your CAD file or on a, some sort of coordinate based system. And what I mean by that is if you have a drawing, um, whether that be just points out there or if you have an actual CAD drawing, you're on a coordinate based system. If what you have is a, a some sort of drawing on there, that drawing is going to have some sort of zero zero point. Or if you have some sort of points out there that you need to measure to, that's going to have some sort of zero zero point as well. If I show you my, my drawing, all these coordinates, no matter what points you have, they're going to have some sort of coordinate. Uh, northern eastern height right this means that i'm on some sort of coordinate drawing um any cat file just want to make sure you're out that put this out there you're on a coordinate system so why is this important well because when you go to stationing right it's, it's going to ask you well are you on a coordinate system and if you are you're typically going to be using this manual stationing here to get started um, and this is what i'm going to go over i'm going to go over what a manually station is and then I'll kind of briefly explain what these three are at the end of the video. Um, but uh, I typically, when I set up on a uh, on a CAD file, I'm using some sort of manual coordinate space system. So what do we do? So if you look at my drawing, I have four control points on my drawing that I just set up. It's a perfect square. Looks great. Um, now, if I was to go in the real world, um, I would most likely put my take my unit, put it in the somewhere in the middle of my job. And then take a prism, some sort of prism, put it on my rod, and go stand over each one of these points and measure them. Because I'm using the emulator, I'm not able to measure to a prism per se because I'm just doing a video on my computer. But uh, if you do need, if you are using a prism, which you most likely are, you can come up here, select this prism, and you can choose which one you're using. We have um, like that I use in my company. We use like these four. We have a like a glass prism, this POA twenty. It's good for a little bit longer range distance measurements. We have a POA 26. This is a wall prism that we use for short range wall measurements with our PLT 300. The POS 150 doesn't actually read plastic prism, so this one and this one you wouldn't be using with POS, but if you have a PLT, you can definitely use these two. POA 25 is a good laser, good prism for short range, with normal job site conditions within 100 feet kind of a thing. And then this is the POA 23. It's the glass wall prism that's good for long range as well. So these are the four that I'm using. Um, but what I'm going to do for the emulator is go to my arrow up here to choose my prism mode. So I'm going to go to prism mode real quick right here and say I'm going to jump from the prism measure mode to laser. So this is important to remember is that whenever you need to move your unit, as far as like uh, turn it, or if you need to choose if you're laser mode or prism mode, you press this arrow right here, and it brings up these three windows. Camera, it's gonna be a camera or a joystick where you can move your unit manually from your tablet. You can go over here, which is gonna be your measure mode, laser or prism. And then if you're stationed, you can go to the map and actually ask the tool to turn to a specific direction on your job. So it's there waiting for you when you get there. That's what that means. Not super important for this video, but that's what that means. So now if I go back, so I put my unit in laser mode, and I now am going to go to my stationing, and I'm doing a manual stationing. You have your drawing on the left and all your points on the right. Now, I've already done this for my emulator, because on the emulator, the way it works is I spin this certain amount of angles and make measurements, and that's how it works. So what I did is I basically went 0, 90, 180, 270 to give you the idea of how this works. So what you do is you, a manual station, if you're ready, you can either tap the control point you're ready to measure on the left, or you can tap it on the right. So if I, on the right, I can tap this as well. Now I know that they're disappearing. That's just an emulator glitch. Don't worry about that. You can see on the left side which points I'm selecting. So I'm going to start with CP00, and I'm going to indicate that I'm there, because if you look at my, my emulator, my angle's towards that and I'm going to measure CP00. And again, in the real world, this is you standing with the prism over that point, making that measurement. So now that I've measured that point, oh, hang on, let me measure 90 now.
I measure zero, zero, then I turn it 90 degrees and measure my 90. You see how they're both green? That means that they're within like six inches of each other, which is six inches is a wide deviation, obviously, but that's what, when it's going to turn green for you. Um, but you notice before it was turning red, and I forgot to turn it. Red means measurement not accurate, right? Basically is what it means. So if you have two greens, that means that they're within a certain tolerance. And uh, you can come down here and check, okay, the horizontal distance between the two, right? If the stationing's out there and it's measuring those two distances, it's saying horizontally how far off it is on the distance, and then your height if they're off on the heights. If you don't care about heights, you can disregard this because horizontal is mainly the one you need. And then stationing information is showing you your positive and negatives. So if the station's here, it's telling you how much it's bouncing around a center point there given the point you've given it. So the lower this is, the better. Uh, now let me go to 180, measure a third point. So you can see that. I'm going to measure, select it, measure it. It's in there now. All three of them measured, all three green. This is a great stationing. And now if I feel good about this, I say check. I come over here and I look at any deviations with the points themselves. And I look at the deviations on the stationing to make sure that I'm happy with everything, that I'm not bouncing be outside of a tolerance that I don't want to be bouncing out, out of. If I'm happy with this, I can say check, or if I'm working with heights, I can come over here to this height button, and I can reset my benchmark height. If this height for the stationing is incorrect, or if I just haven't had time to set an accurate benchmark height on my job site, I can go here, and I can use this menu to set the height that my job site's at. Um, if you have a point, in your point files on your on your job, you can actually just select that point and say, I'm going to measure this point. This point is set at the correct height. Measure. Boom. That's now your measurement. That's now your height. Or what I usually do for me is I go to set manual height and I just type in the benchmark I'm going to measure, which is usually like a, a, a line on the wall by the surveyor or some sort of stake in the field. I just set what the height is and then I measure it. Now, one thing to be aware of is if you're using a prism and you're setting the height, let me show you this. I'm going to go to prism mode real quick. Okay, if I'm using a prism and I'm setting a manual height, it's going to ask you down here not only what the height is, but how high your rod is above it, right? Because your height definitely, if you have a stake over a, a benchmark, if you have your, your rod over a benchmark point, for instance, that rod is going to be set to a specific height on the ground, but you need to specify to the tool how high the rod is above the ground. So just measure from the center of the prism to the bottom of the rod, and that's what your reflector height is. Just want to make sure that I made, made that point. Now you can always change the reflector height here, right? So I can always like type in however high my rod is. You see how it changed? Or I can do it right here as well. But this here, this window, when you have a prism open, is always going to be there for you to change it and adjust it if, adjust it if you're working with heights on your job site. But because I'm in emulator mode, I'm using a laser, and I'm already happy with my stationing as it was here. So if you're happy with all this, you say check, and now you're stationed. You can now go in and uh, do your functions, you do your uh, applications, you can measure and record, any of these you can do now that you're stationed. Now, very briefly, let me just explain what these are. Manual station I just did, where you select the points manually and measure them, semi-automatic, if you notice, I can't select any of these points out here. I'm trying to click on these points, and I can't hit them. It's because it, what you can do is you can go out to your job site and just start measuring your control points that exist. And the tool is going to the, basically figure out which ones are which by the deviations out there, like the distances. This is a perfect square, so it probably wouldn't work with this one because all the points are perfect square. I don't think the tool will be able to figure out which one's which just based off that because the dimensions are exactly equal. But most job sites don't have exactly equal distance control points. So you can go out there and just measure, measure, measure. You won't be able to select any of these, but after you do three of them, you need to have at least three. The tool will be able to say, okay, I know which one's which. Check. Is it accurate? You say yes, and you go on. That's what that is. Again, I don't use it very often, so I'm just briefing over it. Automatic stationing is used when you have this prism. Let me show you. Use this one. If you have this prism selected out there in the field and you have points that are, that are sitting out there in the field on walls or something like that that are this prism, 
you can go to automatic stationing and it's um, and the tool is automatically going to find every control point that has this on there i don't use it very often it's not extremely reliable for me but that is an option for you if uh, it works great if not you might want to just prefer to use one of these two stations um well, the last one is this guy here this is a grid line stationing and i'm not even going to uh, maybe i'll do a different video on this but basically you set it up on a you don't need control points for this, you just need grid lines. You just give it one line of the grid, measure that grid line, measure the other grid line, and then make sure you indicate which side of the grid it's on at the end, and you're good to go. I'll have to do another video on that. This video is mainly on home manual stationing. And I think that'll get you going.